Hi everyone. Welcome to episode number three on JWT authentication in Angular application. Uh, in previous two episodes, we have mainly discussed on JWT authentication regarding the implementation of usage of access token. So in this episode, the main targets are like consuming a secured API using the access token as a authorization header. That is one main target. And next is uh, invoking the refresh token on expiration of the access token using the HTTP interceptors in the Angular. So these are the two main concepts today we are going to implement and understand regarding about them. Okay. So our first step is I I want to consume a secure endpoint by using the access token as authorization header. So before going any further, this entire video has been made as blog. Okay. This entire video you can check like Angular JWT authentication mainly focus on the refresh token in this blog. So here entire uh, video session is made as a blog. If you want to check the blog link, it will be available in the description section under the video. So you can check there. And this is the entire video. So I in, in part two I have shown we are using Nest.js application for authentication, right? In the same application, I have created one uh, uh, fake secured uh, endpoint like to do send point where it need authorization header to consume it. So here we are going to use consume use that to do API into our angular application. So for that. You can check the documentation little bit of documentation regarding that endpoint here itself next js to do API. Okay, the next year setup and everything I have mentioned in the part two video. If you want, please check the part two video first. And the endpoint is just simple to do endpoint. Uh, the ultimate output from this endpoint is just an array of strings, nothing else. Uh, the main target to do this step is to understand how the authorization header will be added to our request in an Angular application. Okay, now we have to consume this uh, endpoint. So before going any further, please uh, make sure that your Nest.js application is running in your local system. So if you observe here, this is my Nest.js server application where it is up and running and here you can observe as well all the endpoints it has. Here it is also has to do endpoint. So now we are able now we are going to consume this API. Okay, let's go to our Angular application. So for this demo purpose, I am going to consume the to do say endpoint also in auth service only. But in real time example, sorry, in real time application, please make sure we have individual service files for uh, their respective endpoints, similar endpoints. Okay, I'm going to create a new method that going to call the this. Uh, Angular data, sorry, to do data. So, to do. This dot HTTP dot get. It is simple get query only. You can observe here. Okay. Get endpoint it is, and I am going to copy the whole URL from my blog. Okay, so that type will be observable. Let's make it any. Okay, uh, that is the logic for calling the API. Now what I will do, I am going to consume this secured endpoint in my dashboard page. When my logic is like I will add a one button uh, like show to do's. When user click on show to do's, this API will be invoked. Okay. So let me go to dashboard component. Uh, here like 
I'm going to call show to do's. Okay, this is going to fetch me some data like sorry. In this I'm going to implement logic like I will call auth service where I have to do's and I'm going to subscribe here. Okay. Value of any it is most likely to be collection of to do's like array of strings so here i am going to create a variable like to do's whose initial value is empty array okay and i am going to assign value data to to do's okay just to to do's now in my HTML, I'm going to create a dashboard component HTML. I'm going to create a button. Okay, like show to do this. Okay, I will re register click event. Yes, same method. Let's copy. Okay, on receiving data, I will bind the data into another uh, UL of list. Letter T of to do I'll bend the to do data. Okay. Now, first step, let's try to consume the secured endpoint without any authorization header and see the output, how it will behave. Okay, it is our Angular application is up and running. Let's test here. I got my go to do button. Okay, go to network call. XHR, let me click. See. I am successfully invoking my secured endpoint, but the response from the server is other because it is a secured endpoint where it requires the access token as its authorization header. So, in Angular, to add the other uh, any headers, the main uh, the technique we have to implement is HTTP interceptor. Interceptors are nothing but uh, a, like a functions that are going to add some additional data before the request is uh, triggered to server okay means nothing but it it has capability to modify the request okay so let's create a what i can say uh, interceptors for that go to my project and inside of the shared folder i'm going to create one more folder like enter sectors okay inside of it i'm going to create a file like auth dot interceptor dot ts okay Let's create an interceptor class pub. Okay, to make this auth interceptor is a angular interceptor, it need to implement HTTP interceptor. Okay, if you go up, it loads from the HTTP module and here it will have a one predefined pre-built function 
that will always get executed if any HTTP request is triggered from the uh, our application. So uh, one thing I want to mention is HTTP interceptor will execute for all API calls. It will uh, it will intercept for all API calls. If you want to uh, escape from the functionality instead of any particular interceptor, we need to write manually condition like based on the URL. We need to skip the interceptor. Okay, and let me implement. So it has method like interceptor. It has input parameters like a request. Request is nothing but it will. Uh, this object contains the triggered API request. And next is nothing but uh, uh, it like uh, we are we are allowing to uh, accept the flow. Okay. If you if we have multiple interceptors, this next will transfer the request to next uh, interceptor. Like that, if no other interceptor, it will directly trigger the uh, request to uh, directly send the request to the server itself. Okay, that is the use. It is like a middleware. If you if you have any server side knowledge, it's uh, like a middleware only. Okay, and now we have here we have to. Add our uh, what I can say our authorization uh, header like access token as the authorization header. For that, what I am going to do, I am going to import the my auth uh, serv auth service. And let's inject the auth service into our interceptor constructor class. Okay, now what we are going to do, we are going to use the user info object from the auth service where we can get the data like, uh, I can say, uh, it has the data like user information like user ID, username, access token, refresh token, everything inside of the object. So let's fetch the user data. So here we are going to check logic like if we have user data and something like I will check for user ID. If they exist means I have available logged in user data. Then I am going to implement my logic else I am going to continue allow the request to process okay and let's return it it is like nested dot handy sorry okay now if we have user information what we have to do we need to add our uh, uh, request every endpoint request the authorization header with value as access token so for here adding address is nothing but to the modifying request right so when we are modifying request please never don't do on the original request uh, so what we have another option like cloning the request object to prepare it as a new request object so we are going to use request.clone like request.clone okay address okay request dot set Header start set authorization header and here here we need to pass the value nothing but our uh, JWT authentication token for JWT authentication token we need to prefix our token with the bearer it is a bearer token and here i am going to pass my user data dot access token okay and assign this 
newly created request to a variable like const new request okay now i am going to allow my process to execute request to execute for that i am i will return next dot handle new request okay so i think we are good for adding the authorization headers let's test it in our application before testing here what i want to do i want to clear the existing application so just do it like this clear we have login right and i know we are we we have credentials like test and one two three four let's try to log in okay we are successfully login right now let's try to click on the show to do's okay still we are getting unauthorized sorry okay we haven't integrated our uh, HTTP interceptor into our application workflow. For that, we need to uh, register this HTTP interceptor in our uh, app module. Now we need to configure our interceptor in our provider array. Uh, this is also like a service only, but uh, for interceptor uh, configuration is a bit different. Okay. provide here we have to use for this provide we need to give a interceptor token like http interceptor that loads from the http interceptor and next we have another property like use class here we need to uh, give our interceptor class name let's import it from like shared interceptors auth interceptor and auth interceptor like auth interceptor and another option like multi set it to true so that is the flow of integrating our interceptor into our application and here we have one more i missed one more thing like auth interceptor is a service right it should be injectable so let me write injectable okay that's loads from the angular core and save it okay remove this semicolon from here and i think now we can test our application just okay now click on the show to do's till we are getting unauthorized okay our adder is added but i am getting unauthorized because the token i am sending here is expired that is the reason it's showing like uh unauthorized response see here authorization barrier and token token is i am sending to the secure endpoint but it is uh, expired so it is returning another end. so in later steps when we implement refresh token this problem will be resolved so for now what we will do let's go to application and clear the browser local storage and re-login into our application okay test two three four successfully logged in and go to networks clear the existing network calls and click on show now see we got 200 and i have got response okay but my data is not binded let's see the issue 
so the error for the reason behind for ng4 uh, uh, in the html issue is um, that is due to we need to import the common module wherever we are using this ng directories okay so in my dashboard i need to import the uh, common module this is the most common issue that will occur when we use lazy module structure so please be initialize it on top of anything okay if, if some cases if still you see the issue once uh, stop your application and uh, start and up it again okay now i will check my application i think console error that ngf is gone so let's go to application and clear the cookies because i have created the token with short time access token expiration so it it always expires after one minute i think so please clear the cache and reload the page and re-login to our application once again one two three four okay now i got logged in and i go to networks clear the existing cache and now click see now i am getting to do 200 see this is my to do list that was binded to the page and if you go to the headers here you can observe authorization is added with the help of the interceptor so that is how we are going to add a authorization request with the value of our access token to consuming the secured endpoint in our application okay that's it about the consuming the secured endpoint interest and next thing is we need to check for the refresh token so i will wait for uh, one minute i think uh, let me check how much time i have set for expiration 30 seconds so i think it should be expired by now let me test it see my token is expired this is happening because uh, i have a token that is expired so to resolve to resolve it we have to use concept called refresh token a refresh token where we are going to it is a key like a access token but it is short key which is long lived more than the access token so instead of asking the users to enter his credential every time on the expiration of access token uh, in general what everybody will do they will use a refresh token refresh token will be sent to the uh, uh that jwt server so jwt server validates the uh, our uh, refresh token if it is a valid refresh token then it will create a new access token as well as the refresh token and it will send back to the users so without uh, uh, re-entering or uh, without uh, user to asking for uh, uh, again enter to credentials we can use the refresh token concept so in my case up to now we haven't checked the expiration of the access token in our application right now we need to check the access token expiration before we are going to add that access token as the authorization header in the interceptor so now the flow is we have to check first before if we go here and go to our path interceptor here we are directly assigning our authorization head right now what we have to do we have to check for the uh, access token expiration if it is not expired we can leave this flow as it is it is if it is expired then we need to call the refresh token endpoint refresh token endpoint will give the response with new access token and new refresh token that what we have to do we have to same logic what we did for login page so i let me go to auth service what we did when we got the access token and refresh token we store them to local storage and decrypt the access token and assign it to the user info right same logic has to be implemented in our auth service as well when we get the response from the refresh token endpoint so now what we will do we will check the first step is we will we need to check the expiration of the uh, user access token for that what we can do 
if state start now less than what I can say. Uh, I'm going to use number function and here I will pass. I have a user data expiration in expired column, right? If you have doubt, you can see a token expiration. Sorry, is token expiration, right? Copy that and copy paste that into our interceptor and make it to seconds. And then if it is if our current time is less than our expiration time, that means our access token is still alive. We can use that. At that time, what we can do? Simply copy this and paste it here. Okay. Next. Next, what is say Here, if it is not expired, it will uh, uh, proceed the execution of our request flow here only because we are here. We are returning our handler, right? If it, if at all, it is expired. Next, we need to implement our logic. So if at all it expires, uh, we need to invoke the refresh token. For that, I, in my blog, I have so given some documentation. For that, in my blog, I have given some documentation. Uh, like if you go below, uh, here there is a short note on what is refresh token and its flow. If you want, you can read there. And uh, where is the documentation? See, if you observe here, okay, auth service dot auth slash refresh token, and its payload is like access token and refresh token. We need to pass both expired access token and the refresh token to the server to fetch the new access token and new refresh token. Please be sure to have these property names as mentioned in the blog documentation itself don't change them because those are server properties if you give any another naming properties user cannot understand and they will take these values as null and you will get uh, unauthorized response from the server so make sure to have the same properties while posting the data since it is a uh, post endpoint so let's go to our auth service and create a new service so i'm going to the auth service here I am going to create a new method that going to invoke the refresh token endpoint. So call refresh token. Okay. And what I will do here, I will going to return this dot http dot post and copy the URL. Paste it here, and this method should receive some input payload. I'm going to write like token payload, and this payload need to be sent to the server. Okay, and I'm going to return as observable of type any. Okay, now we need to consume this uh, uh, endpoint in our auth interceptor. So what I will do here, we are going to write like here. Uh, we, we will return like return in the return itself. We are going to write the logic. This dot path service. So this, this dot auth service call the refresh token and 
what we are going to we will use the pipe instead of pipe after receiving the data from our refresh token what i am going to do i will use the switch map of rfjs operator you can see it is added i think rfjs operators it will take input as so before going to write any logic here my call refresh token expecting the token payload for that what i am going to create here like uh, constant token payload equal to i am going to copy the properties from i am going to i am going to copy the properties from here payload okay and i will assign data from my user data they have the same okay and refresh token user data dot refresh underscore token i am going to pass this payload to my token endpoint okay so that issue is resolved here now this switch map receives the new token payload okay here what i am doing i i call refresh token is observable and finally after receiving that observable we are going to return another observable observable nothing but this next dot handle so that it will resume the uh, uh, old request what i mean is my endpoint request is came okay it hits uh interceptor interceptor it finds that token is expired token expired what i am doing i am passing the my api request uh, for now i am stopping halting my api request and uh, calling the another another request like uh, uh, refresh token once my refresh token data is came i need to resume my original request right so that is an observable like this we need to return from here okay so to go this quickly line what i will do for now i will return it dot handle so like this i want to return i will change the logic for now to uh, escape from that red line i have written like this and now we will write the logic now this new payload is nothing but the new response from the uh, refresh token endpoint where we have a new access token and refresh token the first step what we have to do we need to save them to the uh, where we have to save them need to save them to the local storage and all this logic i want to hear as well so let me copy and go to interceptor implement it okay this is all of my code what i will do just replace this with new token new token new token new token new token okay i have to copy the kwt helper that loads from the separate library so if you want you can write a common method for demo purpose i am not doing that okay let's import alter i think we are good to go this dot hot service okay so what we are doing we are saving our new uh, data to the browser store as well here okay this two lines and then i am decrypting my new access token okay and assigning that access token into my updating my user info with new data then okay so here next after this line of code i need to resume my original request like accessing secured endpoint in this my case so what i will do i am going to write same 
code here itself as well. This code copy here. Once I get the uh, what I can say new access token and refresh token, I'm going to implement the same logic. So get rid of this line. So now I'm going to show brief brief overview on the logic. What we are doing, we are checking for the data first step initial. Next, we are checking for the expiration date. If it is active, we are simply allowing our request to process by adding the authorization header. Okay. And if at all it is expired, then what we are doing, we are invoking the refresh token endpoint. Once the refresh token endpoint got the payload we, using the switch map, what we are doing, we are doing all the process that we did for login in the auth service here as well. Okay. Once that logic is done, we are assigning the new authorization, uh, uh, sorry, new access token as authorization header and resuming the our old API request. Okay. And uh, that's all. And here, one, uh, one more important thing is call refresh token is also a, what I can say, interceptor. Okay, intercept sorry is also a API call. What I told every API call will hit this interceptor. If that's the case, then what will happen? It will go into loop. Because if we at this point think like this, this line is hitted, means API uh, API invoking is started. And again, in that flow, what we will do, it will again recome to this uh, interceptor only. Again, it will execute from the top itself. For what? For uh, this API, refresh token API. At the time, what it will do? Again, it's fall into this logic. Actually, this is not required by the refresh token endpoint, but we haven't any condition to restrict, right? So it will go to this logic. So if if at all it happens, what it will go? It will go like a callback hell. It will go into the loop, never ending loop. So we our application gets uh, what we call crashed. So at that time to avoid the execution of uh, this uh, what I can say uh, interceptor logic on the top of the line we need to write condition like if okay request dot URL dot index of Refresh token. If the URL contains refresh token, endpoint contains refresh token, then what I will do? I will keep this entire logic by returning the next handle middleware. So here we are skipping the this entire interceptor logic for the refresh token endpoint. So that is the one of the main key concepts. Please do remember. If you miss it, your application is going to be in infinite loop and the application will be in no time, it will be crashed. So now let's test our application. Okay, I think our uh, access token is already expired. Let's uh, click on the show to do. Actually, our application is successfully calling the endpoints, but we are getting unauthorized. Why? Okay. My mistake. Here we are again using the old. What I can say. Old user data access token. Please replace that with new token. That is the reason my API is failing. So now if you see, now I am successfully getting the 200. Okay. Now if we click again, it won't call uh, what I can say, uh, refresh token endpoint. One minute, it is looks like calling always. See, I made a mistake, spelling mistake. Please remove it. Okay. Okay. And now test again. 
I think this time it won't call refresh token again and again. Now it is single time only. If you want, we will again retest it once after the expiration. So what I will do in the application, I'm going to remove my credentials and refresh my application. And I am going to log in freshly. So since I have active token at the time, I, I don't need to call refresh token. The to do is only calling. Let me wait for 30 seconds. I think 30 seconds will done. See, now I am able to call refresh token successfully. After calling, I am able to resume the to do send point. So next time when I click on show to do, it won't call refresh token because we have already an active access token. So I want to mention that if you search for interceptor refresh token authentication in Google, lot of uh, uh, what I can say examples they will show after failing of the what I can say they will allow to do request first. If it fails, then in the error message, like uh, I think something error like is there here. Subscribe it and uh, there they will catch error. If it is 404, they will recall. Uh, or here they will write logic, entire logic, what I have did. They will call inside of it uh, a refresh token and they then they will call again to do. So instead of uh, doing uh, the refresh token, after to do the API is uh, went to the server, it is always good to check for the expiration date. So, so that we can, what we can say, our uh, application looks more efficient as well as uh, our, uh, uh, we can reduce one unnecessary to do API call to the server. So that's all about the refresh token integration into our Angular application. I think we have covered two major concepts here like adding access token as a authorization header and refresh token in functionality into our angular application so that's it about everything we can do about jwt authentication in angular i think this video has delivered some useful information to you all if you like my video please subscribe to my channel we will meet you again with the new videos until then signing off